Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we'll give it a few minutes to allow people to come into the room. Um, but in the meantime, I'll do a quick introduction. My name is Monica, and I'm the head of customer success here at Notion. And so what I do is I help businesses of all sizes, small businesses all the way through large enterprises, get completely set up in Notion. And so today's session I'm really excited to share is about project management in Notion. Um, I see people joining. Please drop where you're from. I would love to see what city different people are from who we have represented here. Um, but this session is specifically on how to do project management in Notion. Um, as you've enjoying, been enjoying the sessions today, you probably know Notion is a great uh, note taking, documentation, wiki tool, but it also has very robust workflows related to project and task management. Um, and project management is something that every team has a need for, whether you are a product and engineering or a design team, but even marketing teams, HR teams, we all have projects that we're really seeing either internally or externally. So today I'm gonna to show you how to build out a system so that you can have full visibility into the status of projects, how they're coming down the pipeline, and even do things like assign tasks and ownership of these projects. So we will dive into the workspace to demo this. So what you're looking at right now, just as a recap for those of you that are not as familiar with Notion, is a workspace in Notion. So we define this entire instance as a workspace in Notion. And this particular workspace is for the imaginary company called fig.io. Um, fig is actually named after the Notion office dog. And so um, fig has decided to set up their company workspace in the way that you see here on the left hand. So this is how they've set up their structure. It's a navigable kind of wiki setup. So if I was new to the company, I can pretty much go through these different pages like the master homepage and self-serve a lot of this information. Um, they've set it up in a way where there are different functions, have different hubs or homepages in Notion, like the product team, the engineering team, the marketing team, and so on and so forth. So as you know, you can click through any of these pages and sub pages in Notion to read more about the documentation and get all of the context that's going on here. So I can quickly read the mission, vision, and values document and know that that's a part of the master kind of fig homepage in Notion. But aside from this type of documentation, I want to spend time on project management. And so as you can see here from the left-hand menu, they have something called the project roadmap. So I'm going to dive into that. I'll close the left-hand sidebar. And this is what a simple kind of project roadmap looks like in Notion. This is using a structure, a feature that we offer in Notion, which is called databases. And databases can take many different forms. You can have a database table, as you see here, just a simple table. You can have a database that is a Kanban or Trello style board. You can even have things like timelines, Gantt charts, calendars, and I'm gonna demo most of those today. So this simple kind of uh, database table setup is the most straightforward way where you can organize your various projects. Um, and so the way that this org has done it is they have things like the name of the project here, the status, whether it's approved or in progress, um, whatever OKR it's related to. If you're using an OKR structure, um, you can see the different objectives listed here. And then Notion allows you to capture rich information like different dates on a schedule, in this case, the launch schedule of the project, the teams that are working on any given project at any given time, the owners and the priority. And so as you can see here, right off the bat, I have a bird's eye view of the different projects that are going on in this company and what the status is. Um, this is a way where you can kind of centralize the information and everyone at your org can have visibility into what's going on. As you can see, some different teams are working on different projects. Even the marketing team has their projects in here. And so it's a really great way to kind of centralize the information and use these tags to slice and dice the information either by OKR or by team. But as I mentioned, um, tables and databases are more robust because they're actually databases. And what I mean by that is that each row in this table as you can see here, I can open it up to a full page and I can read inside this page to learn more about what's going on with this project. 
And so you don't have to think about opening three different tabs to get all of the context on a project. Like you don't need to open up the spreadsheet about the project and then also the documentation and then also a separate board or JIRA ticket or something like that. You can simply open up the related project page in Notion and all of the context is inside of this card. And so I can see, I'm gonna open this as a full page so that you can see it easier. This project that we're working on called Improve Sharing Workflow is high priority as we saw on the table. Here are the relevant tags for the teams that are working on it, the status, the OKR, everything that we saw summarized in the table. But I can scroll to the body of the page and this is where I'm capturing everything about this project in its life cycle from the specifications to any notes that were taken, any links to other relevant documents, and even things like checklists to do items, major milestones, what decisions were made, and so on and so forth. So the full context of this project is captured in the body of the project page. So that's why I say that databases in Notion are not just simple tables, but they are true repositories of information where each line item is an entry into this database. Um, and so as a team, when you're setting up your uh, project roadmap, you can pretty much customize this however you want. Um, this company was able to set up these various columns. We call them properties. However you want, you can name them whatever you want and you can use whatever tags that you want to create on the fly. So it's completely flexible and customizable to your needs. We don't tell you how you need to set this up. So for example, I can start a new property here and let's say that my projects um, all have a related initiative. So I can call this initiative. From there, I need to select what property type this is gonna be. In other words, what type of information should we be able to support? It can be simple text. It can be a number if there's a related number. It could be a date, a person that you're tagging like we showed in the owner field um, or even uploading attached files and medias. For example, if there's a related PDF for any project. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna use the select and multi-selects. Those are the different tagging options. I like multi-selects because you can use multiple tags. And so we've selected that and now we are able to completely customize this on the fly. So let's say we have an initiative called growth. I just created this tag, I'll hit enter to create it. Let's say we have another initiative called retention. I just created that, I'll hit enter. And let's say we have another initiative called um, advocacy and I hit enter. So I literally created this on the fly. These are the important properties for projects at this company on this team, but they can be literally anything you want. And then they become the drop list of what you can choose from. I will move this column over so that you can see it with respect to the project name. So I know that improved sharing workflow, for example, is part of the growth and retention initiative. And then I'll go and I'll keep going down this list and filling this just for this example. But of course, when you're adding projects, you would be doing this for each one um, in that moment. So I'll go ahead and add them. I can add as many as I need to that have to do with any given project. Maybe they're all three, maybe they're just one or two. Um, and so I'll complete that. So now that's pretty easy. Um, we've been able to tag and identify this information. So again, lots of visibility into what's going on and tying the projects to the larger picture. Now I know that my improved sharing workflow project that is very important is part of these two initiatives <clears throat> and it's approved as well as, you know, I can see the dates and launch schedule. So now same idea, I can open up the full page of this project to see all of that information summarized, all of these tags here and the information is in the body. Why is this important? Why is it important to create different properties? Why is it important to categorize our projects and our tasks? The reason being is because it these become the building blocks where you can slice and dice this information however you want. Because we have the properties created in Notion, we are now able to use those as the basis through which we sort this information. So I can say something like, only show me projects where the initiative is growth, or only show me projects where the status is approved, for example. Um, and this allows teams and sub teams to create different filtered views of this project roadmap, all in one place, all pulling from the single source of, of truth. So for example, I can do something like, 
apply a filter here where it says filter. And then I'll add a filter, which says only show me the projects where the initiative, the one that we just created, contains, let's say, growth. So now I'm looking at a much more filtered down view, and I'm only looking at the projects that are part of my growth initiative. I don't have to apply this filter every single time. I can save it for constant reuse simply by renaming this view and then coming back to it. So right now the view was originally called master table because it was all of the projects, but I can rename it here. Instead of master table, I'm gonna call this all growth projects. Um, and now I've saved this view for constant reuse. As you can see, my team has created another uh, number of other views here that I can toggle between. And so this is why Notion is awesome for consolidating information, putting all of your projects in one place, and then using the power of filtered views to slice and dice it so that different teams are just seeing the specific view that they care about. Um, this prevents against having you know, 10 different project management tables and 10 different documents and sheets anywhere else, but rather we're all working off of the same source of truth with all of the visibility and we're just like filtering it depending on what we wanna see. Um, my colleague created a view called high priority projects. So I assume that's all projects where the priority is high, we can click in and see what's going on here. And um, as I suspected, it's all projects where the priority is high. And if I'm ever curious, I can click on the filter and see that that is in fact the filter that was applied here. You can stack multiple filters. You can say only show me the projects where the priority is high and it's a marketing project. Um, and so you can get as uh, granular as you want with filters. I can see there's another view here called all approved projects. So I assume that's all of the projects where the status is approved and that makes sense. So if you wanna show this to your leadership team, you wanna show this to your executive board, you can say, hey, I'm not gonna show you the whole project roadmap, but I'm gonna show you this filtered version that is all approved projects. And if you're curious about everything that went into the project, of course, you can open up that full page and read everything, all of the context in one single place. So that's how filters and views work. But as I mentioned before, databases in Notion are repositories of information. So we don't have to put it only in a table. We can actually visualize this in multiple different formats. Um, probably the most relevant for projects and tasks across your team is not a table, but maybe it's a board where you can move things down this Kanban board. And so we can easily just visualize this differently, Notion supports it. So we're gonna click on that drop down list of views. And this time we're gonna click on a view which is called board view. If I click on that, as you can see, it's taking the same information, all of the same projects from our project roadmap, but it's visualizing it into this kind of Trello style Kanban board where each column here is the status. So the board has been grouped by status. I can see all of my projects here grouped by status. Um, everything in Notion is dynamic, so you don't have to work off of the table. You can work off of this board, and I can move something, let's say, from released to approved. And I'll drag and drop that card, and it will automatically update the status here to approved. I can open this up, and I can see that the status is now approved. So lots of teams love to work off of moving things along a board. They're able to see very clearly the status of everything. Um, and you don't even have to create columns just by status. Because we created different properties like initiative and priority, we can actually group these columns by any of those properties that we have created because it's so customizable. So here it says it's grouped by the project status, but I can say, you know what, I wanna group it by the initiative, the one that we just created. So now I'm seeing all of my growth, retention and advocacy projects. And there's a number here telling me how many there are. So there's five retention projects. Or I can do things like grouping it by owner. And a lot of teams love grouping by owner because you're able to have visibility into bandwidth and dependencies. So you know who's working on what at any given time. I know that Mike has two projects, Jen has two projects, Lily has three projects, and so on and so forth. If anything changes, if the project gets assigned from Lily to Leslie instead, I can simply grab it and drag it here 
And I know that it will appear under Leslie. So this is a great way to see who's owning what and to even assign um, various tasks to people. So you can always start a new card at the bottom. And if I need to assign a new task to Mike, for example, or a new project to Mike, I can simply start a new card here and you know I can call this new project. And it's automatically being assigned to Mike because it's in his column. So you can visualize this by any one of those properties that we have created. Of course, like any other database in Notion, you can layer filters on top of this. So you can group it by owner and then even apply an additional filter which says only show me projects where the launch date is in the future. And now you can see all upcoming projects by owner. Um, a different type of visualization that Notion supports aside from tables, aside from boards is one which is called a timeline view, which is more of a Gantt chart. Again, this is fantastic for project management. Um, you're able to see what's coming down week over week and what is happening on any given week. So there is a view here from the dropdown called timeline view. I can click on that. And this is a really unique kind of visualization in Notion where you can see your projects overlaid on the relevant dates. And then you can see what's happening week over week on any given day, any given month or any given week. And so for example, our favorite project that we keep going back to is this improve sharing workflow project. As you can see, it's happening from the dates of May 4th um, and a range going to May 19th. And if I needed to confirm that, I can always open up the card and see the date range here for the launch schedule. But seeing it like this lets me know what's, what's gonna be released pretty soon. Are, is anything overlapping? Is anything behind schedule or should I shift things around on this project release schedule? So if something needs to be shifted, maybe I need to push something back, I can always grab the card and move it and it will dynamically update those release dates. So I'm, I'm able to work off of this timeline view. I don't even need to work off of the table um, and really set my plans for what's happening over the next quarter, over the next you know, six months. And I can do this by putting things along this timeline. Of course, everything is a card. So going back, this is still our favorite project and we're still opening this and reading everything about this project. It just happens to be visualized on a timeline. Um, and the last one I'll end with is calendar view. That one's pretty straightforward. Um, instead of a week over week timeline, it's just a pure kind of 30 day calendar. This view is available if you're clicking on the drop down. there's one called calendar view. And same idea, we're able to see this visualized on a calendar on the relevant dates. And I can open up the card to see more information, but otherwise I can simply work off of this calendar. If dates change, I can move them around. If things get extended or shortened, I can um, update them here and it will update the dates. But companies love using this and teams love using this because they're able to see what's going out in a given month. Um, you can use this for, if you're on a marketing team, things like content calendar, what blog posts, what social media posts are gonna go out in the month. Um, or even internally, like a uh, employee holiday leave calendar, you can see who's on vacation and when, what's their dependency like. You can create tags around their backup plan or what type of leave that they're taking and things like that. And so that's how you can visualize um, everything across all of these different ways in Notion. I'm going to go back to our original view here. And I want to showcase how this really works at scale. The goal of Notion is to reduce mental friction. We don't want you to have to be looking in different places. We want to bring down the walls and bring down the silos between teams and their ability to collaborate. So the goal is to really have everything in one place for transparency and easy flow of information. And at scale, this means that your team is contributing to this project roadmap, is maintaining this. I think our project roadmap internally at Notion has like 60,000 projects in rows. And so we maintain that over time. Um, but at scale, we want to make sure that people are adding information correctly, that nothing is getting overridden, and that it's very uniform and predictable. And so this happens through templates. You can actually templatize these entries in Notion. You don't have to freehand them like I have done. But you can actually build templates here next to this dropdown. 
for each type of item that is being submitted into this database. So we have a template for um, whenever we need to start a new feature or whenever there's a new mobile project or a new engineering project or a new marketing project. All of those are templatized. So we just kick them off using the template and it gets added to this roadmap. So for example, let's say there's a new feature, a new feature for the customer journey. We have a template for that. So I just pull the template and as you can see, it pre-fills everything for me. So a new feature for the customer journey um, means that it's high priority by default. These types of features are high priority. It means that it gets assigned to these two teams by default. It means that it's part of that OKR, optimized customer journey, makes sense by default. And let's say David is always the owner of these types of projects. On top of that, everything in the body is templatized for me. So I don't even have to think about it, I can just get started. I can start putting in the specifications of the project, any supporting documentation, and start adding the week over week milestones and tasks. And so this makes sense because everybody can have a very uniform structure and template for when we are working on a project. So all I have to do is name the project. Um, let's just call it new um, sign up flow and begin to add this information here. Let's say this is part of the growth initiative. And with, let's say we don't know the launch schedule just yet. Of course, I would go ahead and add the details. And now this new sign up flow project is appearing in my project roadmap. We will continue to work off of this and fill the template. Same thing for other types of projects. If it's a new marketing project, we have a template for that. Um, and in this case, it's slightly different. It gets assigned to the marketing team and it gets assigned to Lauren because Lauren is the owner of all marketing projects. So you get the idea and this is, this makes it really easy for different teams to work together um, because you can already kind of share the formats that work really well. And everyone is kind of on the same page of how we communicate and document our various projects. So I highly recommend building out a templates library wherever possible across your team. And it just really makes things a lot more efficient. You don't have to think about it too much. The last thing I'll share about project managing in Notion is that Notion, as I started this conversation with, is a contained workspace. Everything is in that workspace. We have hubs and top level pages for different teams. And so the idea is that information is readily available wherever in Notion, and you can kind of reference that information and pull it at any given time. That can manifest in a variety of different ways. One is on any given Notion page, for example, improve sharing workflow, I can open this up. In the body of a Notion page, I can you know, go to the bottom and I can reference other pages in Notion using the at mention. So I can say at fig home, and I've quickly linked that fig homepage in two seconds. You can also embed other calendars and other databases directly in this body if, if they already exist. So if this is your project management database, but let's say you have a separate database for all of your meeting notes. You can embed it here using slash, it's called linked database. And Notion is gonna ask me of all of the databases that we have in our whole workspace, which is the one that you wanna embed here. I'll say meeting notes. Um, I think it's this one. So this is automatically pulling in our meeting notes database that I can reference here. Um, and so you're not duplicating anything, you're not copying URLs, you're not creating copies, you're literally referencing the same sources of truth that exist throughout the workspace, and you're just embedding them in other places for easy access. I can always click here and navigate to the original, or I can simply have it here to reference as I'm working on this larger project. And so this makes sense because once we have our project roadmap centralized with everyone's projects, we can embed this on other pages so that the teams are referencing the project roadmap whenever they need it. An example of this is I will open up this left-hand menu. I don't necessarily have to go to project roadmap every time I wanna work on this, but I can embed it in other places. I think the product team has done this. Yeah, so the product team has their own hub in Notion. As you can imagine, this is their documentation. This is where they live what it takes to be on the product team, all of your guides and processes, but they've also embedded the project roadmap right here. 
And I can see right away that they've, they're only showing two. I guess it's all high priority projects. I can check the filter. Oh, it looks like it's all Lily's projects where owner is Lily right here. And so they don't wanna see all of the projects coming up. They only wanna see the projects where the owner is Lily. And maybe this is important to them because maybe this is the head of product or this is the person who's currently on a sprint. But it's really awesome because Lily can simply work off of this view. She could even add new projects. She can change the status of the projects here. And it's going to dynamically update the master project roadmap. So we've just embedded it here with the filtered down version that we care about, that we can look at and operate off of every day. But of course, we can always navigate to that master to see the full project roadmap. So I highly recommend this whenever you're setting up your workflows in Notion. Um, try to embed content and self-reference content as much as possible. You don't need to create duplicates. Everyone is working off of the same source of truth. We're just slicing and dicing those views for however makes sense. Um, and so as a reminder, this is possible through something called linked databases. You can type slash linked database and Notion will ask you to name the database that you want to embed and pull through here. So that's a really quick and easy way to do it using our slash command menu. Um, so I hope that this was really helpful. I think that um, I project manage a lot of elements of my life, not just at Notion, but also personally. Um, you know, if I'm looking for apartments or if I'm planning a trip, all of this is visualized in different boards and tables. Um, so I highly recommend that you try to check out the workflows in Notion. Um, everything that you saw today is actually available in our templates gallery. So none of this was completely from scratch. We have templates for all of this. But the idea is to start building accountability, assigning tasks, building your projects out in a way that um, everyone has visibility into it. And you're reducing the time that you need to ask about what's going on with a project, what's the status of the project, who's owning it at any given moment. Um, so Notion really helps you have a bird's eye view and contextualize all of the information within your existing workspace, any existing notes, any existing guides, or even objectives. And so I hope that this session was helpful. Um, we're going to take questions in the next Q&A session. So I will be there if you want to deep dive into this. And I will be showcasing this same workspace to help workshop questions together. Thank you so much.